right. I'm now going to explain some of the most basic equipment that you'll need, trying to keep it very basic so that you don't have to order from the other side of the world. Um, the first thing is a cutting mat. These come in various sizes and I would suggest getting one that is at least A3. This one of mine is A2. If you don't have one, you could cut on a piece of bookbinder's board, but it wouldn't last very long. Um, and the advantage of a cutting mat is that it is self-healing and also has guidelines for cutting and measuring. Next, you will need a bone folder. This is probably the most important piece of equipment and will be used both for folding paper and for working down glued surfaces. Bone folders are made of either bone, teflon, wood or plastic, but I would highly recommend getting either a bone or a teflon folder. If you absolutely can't get a bone folder, you could try and use the edge of a Stanley knife. You might get by with that for a bit, um, but it's worth investing in a bone folder. Then the third item is a metal ruler. Again, if you absolutely have to, you could use a plastic ruler, but it's really worth having a metal one. An essential piece of equipment is a Stanley knife or utility knife, depending where you are. Um, these come in different sizes. That's a bigger one. These are smaller ones. I would say, quite frankly, this, I prefer the smaller ones and cheap ones are fine as well. Um, but I would suggest having at least two separate knives because we'll use them for different things. Then brushes for glue. While bookbinders brushes are traditionally round, um, this is the one I use most often. Although I also find it helps having a smaller brush that you can use for certain things. Um, you could get by with, with an ordinary paintbrush as long as it has fairly firm bristles because it's quite important to be able to really press them well and get the glue into little nooks and crannies. Then the next thing is an awl. An awl which is used for making holes in the paper, which we need to do if we are to stitch the, the book block. If you don't have an awl, you could use a sharp needle or a sharpened nail. Or what I've sometimes found helpful is also using one of these little needlework unpicker things. Um, but you need something to, that can punch holes. Then you will need a needle. Although there are special bookbinders needles, you could get by with any needle for this project as long as the eye is big enough for the thread that you are going to be using. Then you will need a pair of scissors. For this project, any scissors will do. And also a hammer. And any ordinary hammer will do for this, for this sort of project. And then something slightly trickier you need something to press your book with. A proper bookbinder's press is usually a big, heavy and expensive piece of equipment. You can also find or make a simpler wooden press from two boards and some metal threads. And I'll provide links to other YouTube people who show you how to do that. But what I found helpful is you can simply use boards and G clamps these type of G clamps or you get bigger ones as well or smaller ones um, and two boards and then we'll we're going to put the book between there and clamp it fast um, for for this project I'm using very small boards because that's all we need but you could um, for bigger ones you could use bigger boards and possibly more G clamps or bigger G clamps um, and then the last thing, and this is optional, and I'll explain it more when we get there, is you may want to have some board and sticks for making a groove on the um, a groove, but I'll explain that when we get. We now turn to the materials that you're going to need in this project. 
The first is paper for the book block. The book block is the inside part that will be attached to the cover. Um, and for this project, we're going to use 20 sheets of ordinary A4 printer paper, which most people should have available. Um, this is usually 80 grams per square meter. And we're going to cut it in half to give us A5 paper, which we will then fold to make an A6 book. If you have um, letter sized paper that should work just as well except that your end book will be a slightly different size but that doesn't matter. The reason for using this is that printer paper usually runs in the long grain and this is therefore an easy way of ensuring that the grain direction will be correct. To check that the grain direction of your paper is correct, you can gently bend the paper in both directions. And if the grain direction is in the long grain, then you will find that it bends more easily in that direction. To learn more about grain direction, you can watch my video entitled Your Bible's Grain Direction. I'll put it in the links. If you can't get the right grain direction, it's not the absolute end of the world, but it is generally a good idea to try and make sure that, that the grain direction is correct. So that's your paper for your book block. The next thing that you will need is some bookbinders board. This has different names depending where on the world you are and is sometimes called chipboard, greyboard or esker board but it's basically a hard and compact cardboard that we will use for the covers. It comes in different thicknesses and I would suggest getting something of around 1800 grams per square meter for a project like this. If you simply can't get a suitable board you could also use the thinner board found on a cereal box, um, but I will demonstrate that in a separate video. The next thing you will need is paper for end pages. I'm going to use this marbled paper that I happen to have. Um, the end pages are the pages at the front and back of the book that are pasted down onto the cover. They may, they are often decorative or else in a different color. Um, and they should be somewhat thicker than the paper used in the rest of the book. I usually use 120 to 130 grams per square meter, although you could use up to 160. Um, like the paper for the book block, you should make sure that the grain direction for this is runs correct. But in this case, it will mean that the grain direction will be in the short grain so that when you fold it you fold it with the grain and it will be in this the set so that it will be the same as the book block then you're going to need some board for your spine you for this you need a slight, somewhat thicker piece of board it can vary um, you'll develop a feeling for that later and see what you prefer I would suggest something of around 160 GSM, but it could be a bit thicker. Um, again, make sure that the grain direction is so that it bends this way. Um, we'll cut a, a strip out like that. You'll also need a piece of craft paper, sort of relatively thin but strong paper, sort of you can usually find the type of paper used for packaging. Just make sure that it's reasonably strong. And also, again, that the grain direction is in the length, so that when you, when you fold it, um, it will be this way. Next, you're going to need some form of covering material for the book. For this project, I'm going to use a... Well, I would suggest that you use a cover made from decorative paper or, or some sort of strongish paper um, that should be somewhat thicker. You, you can really use anything that you can find. Um, 
but for this project I'm going to be using this paper that I have just colored using acrylic paint. There's a separate video on how I did it. It's a super easy way, the easiest way I know of coloring paper, but it can provide quite an effective um, book cover. So yeah, but there are there very various other things you could do. You could also print out something on the printer, but I would just make sure that it's not just ordinary printer paper, but use something somewhat thicker. Um, I'd say about 160 grams. Then you're going to need th thread for stitching. Traditional bookbinding thread is usually cotton, which is waxed with beeswax. Um, but for a project like this, I'm simply going to use a nylon thread that is very strong um, and not too thick. But again, you can experiment with that as long as it's reasonably strong and not overly thick. Um, then you're going to need mull, which is a sort of starched gauze that is used for gluing the spine of the book. If you can't get mull, you could also use a piece of muslin or a thin cotton material. I do know people who've even used paper. I wouldn't really recommend that, but if you're in a pinch, you could also use a sheet of paper, but make sure that the grain direction is correct then as well. Um, then, very important, is glue. For this project, I'm going to be using PVA glue. Um, while you can get PVA that is made especially for bookbinding, and that's ideal obviously, this is difficult to get in many places and many other PVA glues also work well. However, it's important to ensure that the glue you get is suitable for using with paper and also that it's fairly flexible. To check its flexibility, you can brush some onto some plastic, allow it to dry and then peel it off and check that it can bend easily. You'll also find during the course of the videos that for some things I like the glue to be thicker and for others thinner, um, but that's something that you'll discover in the course of your, your working and you'll gradually develop a feel for it as well. And then finally, and this is optional, um, you may want to either have where did I put them? Headbands. Oh, I don't say I lost them. Oh, yeah, they are. Um, you may want to, you can get commercially made artificial headbands, but I wouldn't advise that you go out and buy them. Um, this, is, this is how they come. But for this project, what we're going to do is simply make um, handmade headband with a piece of fabric and a piece of string but they're really decorative so you know you can treat them as optional so that's all of our equipment and materials and in the next video we are going to get started with actual binding